Hi everyone, this is Fonts for Video Games. I'm Justin Penner, a typeface designer based in Vancouver, Canada. I've been researching video games and how game developers use fonts, and I've made a lot of interesting discoveries, so I thought it would be nice to share with everyone at Type Weekend. So, in the first part, I'm going to talk about the technical side, so how do fonts work in video games, how do you load a font into a game engine, uh, what kind of file formats um, are supported, and so on. Uh, then in part two, I'm going to talk a little bit about some opportunities that I think are out there for type designers and foundries uh, to work on fonts for the game business um, and to sell fonts to game developers. And then in part three, I'm going to look at how we can improve typography overall in games and build the ecosystem of fonts in video games. So, section one, font support in game engines. So just for a bit of background, the, uh, there's a lot of different game engines that game developers use, but the top two would definitely be Unreal and Unity. So Unreal and Unity are basically the two that you would see used for a lot of big blockbuster games that are released on a variety of different consoles, um, and they're by far the biggest. But there are hundreds more. So if you're an indie game developer, you might, um, you might also use Godot or RPG Maker or one of hundreds of others. So how do you load a font into a game engine? Um, most game engines use a pretty similar system, uh, but the downside is they don't directly load a TTF or an OTF file. You have to convert it first. And you might be able to do that in the game engine, but basically um, what you need to do is open your font file and then convert it into a sprite map, um, which is like the image you see here. So that's a sprite map of a font in a couple of different sizes. Um, and basically what it does is it dumps all the glyphs of the font into an image, uh, rasterizes them, and then saves it to a PNG file or something similar. And then there's a second file that has all the data that tells the game engine where each glyph is and what Unicode it maps to. So you're probably thinking that might cause some problems when it comes to things like open type features, and you'd be 100% right, uh, because open type features are not supported in most game engines, which means that you can't have ligatures, you can't have uh, kerning, you can sometimes have kerning, but kerning is pretty rare uh, and difficult to set up in a game engine. And you can't have shaping, so there's no support for um, for complex scripts like Devanagari or Arabic. So what does it look like once you've loaded the font into the game? So this is an example of a 32 pixel sprite and then showing what it looks like in 3D and then what it looks like in 3D with some smoothing applied to it, which basically makes it blurry instead of showing, uh, showing the pixels. So none of those look very great, especially if you're in a 3D environment and you're looking at it up close. So another way of rendering in video games um, that's not nearly as common but is starting to be supported by some game engines is called sign distance fields. So basically a sign distance field is kind of a hybrid format um, that's sort of like a raster and a vector image combined. So the image itself is saved as a raster image, like the glowing white A you see on the top left there. So that's a 32 by 32 pixel image of an A, and the white and the black and the grays in between represent the distance from the edges of the letter. And then the rendering engine is able to render a letter that has sharp edges. Um, but obviously you can see there's some problems. There's some bent corners and some rounded corners and some kind of glitches. So to improve on that, someone came up with multi-channel sign distance field rendering, um, which basically splits the distance field into three separate layers, which can easily be saved in an RGB file. Um, and it gives you much better quality, even at a smaller size, like 16 by 16 pixels, as you can see. Uh, the only downside of that is, as I mentioned, there's not a lot of game engines that support it yet. Uh, 
All right, so part two. What kinds of opportunities are there for type designers and foundries in the world of game development? So I think the first opportunity is to go to the game developers and sell to them directly um, through the marketplaces where they buy assets. So a lot of game developers will buy 3D models and plugins and artwork and stuff like that, um, sound effects for their games from a marketplace like ArtStation or one that's specifically for their game engine like Unity or Unreal. Um, and then there's a really interesting indie platform called Itch. Um, Itch is actually a distribution platform for games, um, for indie games in particular. So it's like an indie version of Steam. And people can go there and buy small indie games, but the indie developers also can buy and sell assets on the same platform. And definitely recommend checking it out. So the next opportunity, I think, is making licenses workable for game development. So I think that's probably the biggest problem that I've seen, which is that font licensing, as we all know, is quite complicated. And um, there's a lot of different things to think about when it comes to font licensing. And it gets even more complicated when you're on the client end, reading licenses from different foundries and trying to figure out which license uh, is appropriate for your project and what you can do and what the restrictions are. So if you're a game developer, and you're developing a game for a variety of different platforms, or maybe just one platform on the list here, uh, PC, console, mobile, or web, and you want to use a font in the game, which license would you pick? A desktop, web, app? Probably not an ebook license. Um, if you start with a desktop, as the first example, a desktop license is going to cover design and development of the game and the artwork surrounding it and the marketing materials, but it's not going to necessarily cover embedding inside the game. So then we need to move on to something else. Would a web license make sense? Probably not for a PC game or a console game, but for a web-based game or a mobile game that's browser-based, maybe. But also that doesn't really seem like the, like the correct intent of a web license. Um, a game feels like it would be more of an app, right? So an app license could maybe apply to all of those. But the problem with an app license is that most of them are written, uh, most founders write their app licenses in a way that um, they're expecting that the font binary, the actual software for the font, the TTF or the OTF file is going to be embedded in the game um, and distributed to the end users, um, which is why an app license costs a lot more. But as we've seen in the, in the previous slides, um, that's not how it works in a game engine. The game engine pre-rasterizes the font first um, and then loads it in as an asset in a sprite map, as we saw. And so that doesn't really fit with the, with the terms generally on an app license, because app licenses often still won't allow things like converting to a different format. So what about a game license? Well, that sounds like a great idea, but it doesn't exist yet. Um, I've never seen a type foundry that has a license specifically for games. But considering how games don't really fit into any of the other categories, maybe it would be a good idea to come up with a separate game license. Another opportunity for catering to game developers would, of course, be to design pixel fonts. So pixel fonts are easy to design, they're fun to design, you can design one in an hour. And to be honest, there aren't a lot of pixel fonts out there that have everything that a game developer needs. Most pixel fonts either have a limited character set, or maybe they're not very well designed, or they're in a strange format that's difficult to convert, or they just don't have clear license terms. Um, so I think if you can design a pixel font that has an extended character set and maybe it's creative, looks interesting, and has some really clear license terms to use in games, um, I think that would be amazing. All right, part three. How can we improve typography in games overall and kind of build the ecosystem to use better fonts in games? 
So as I already went over, improving font licensing is a huge one. Um, like I said, I haven't seen any font foundries that have a license that really works for game development. So coming up with a new license is absolutely essential. Um, there's a lot of different terms that exist in most font licenses that basically prevent game developers from using them in the first place, like no modifications. Does that mean uh, that you can't convert it to another format? Some of them specifically say you can't convert to another format. Is rasterizing it? Does that count as converting it to another format? I don't know. You can look at it the other way, that con the conventional wisdom says that license restrictions no longer apply once the text has been rasterized. And a lot of designers and type designers um, think about font licensing that way as well. Um, but if you think about it that way, then all you need is a desktop license to embed a font in a game, which doesn't quite make sense either. So bottom line, licensing needs to be rewritten and maybe a separate game license for games. So the next thing we can do to improve typography in games would be to design fonts specifically with game engines in mind. So that doesn't just mean pixel fonts, um, but pixel fonts are popular with games, of course, um, and they're a lot of fun to design. So designing more pixel fonts and then also keeping other things in mind when you're designing uh, more traditional fonts that might be used in a game, like the fact that you might not have kerning, you might not have access to ligatures um, or open type features, and then also legibility is a big deal as well in games because there's a lot of things that can cause the text to uh, become distorted or blurred or whatever. So legibility is a big issue. And one last thing that you can do is help with tool development. So there's a lot of developers and coders in our community um, and probably the First and most important problem in my mind is um, bringing more language support and shaping to game engines. So there's a lot of people probably watching this talk that know a little bit about shaping um, or that have worked on tools for shaping. And maybe there's some way that they can be ported to game engines. Because um, currently there's no support for uh, in most game engines for any sort of complex scripts. Uh, another type of tool would be rasterizing tools. So there's only one kind of standard rasterizing tool that's probably used by develop game developers across the board, which is uh, Angel Code's BM font. Um, they're the ones that developed the BM font format that most game engines use, um, but their tool is only uh, available for Windows. So it'd be nice to have more of a universal tool that's cross-platform and gives the same results everywhere. Uh, but that doesn't currently exist, as far as I know. Um, another thing that would be helpful would be maybe some plugins for different font editors to allow exporting bitmap fonts in different formats. And then also when you're developing, um, let's say, a pixel font in glyphs, you're, uh, you're drawing a vector uh, component of a tiny little square, and then you're reproducing it um, on a grid, basically. So you're creating a vector version of a bitmap font. So it would also be helpful to have some conversion tools for converting that to an actual bitmap font and, uh, and vice versa. So that's basically it. I just wanted to encourage everyone who might be interested in games or interested in looking at a targeting a certain vertical um, to look at the video game business. It's $180 billion a year worldwide as of last year, which is more than the movie business and the music business combined. So I think there's probably a lot of opportunities there. So just to wrap up, I wanted to tell everyone about a font I've been working on at the same time here, which is Player Sans Mono. It's a pixel font for game developers. It's built on an 8x8 grid and then 8x13 for the Latin extended set. Um, and it comes in four different styles. And basically the, the main weight, the second one you see from the top, is based on the Atari font um, that probably anyone who's played video games in the 80s and 90s is familiar with. Um, it's loosely based on it. So that's actually uh, in the Type Weekend goodies bag, and you can also find it on GitHub at the link below. And that's it. Thanks for watching. Thanks to everyone at Type Weekend for putting this together. And uh, you can also check the link I've posted here 
for the slide deck and a transcript if you're interested.